Any questions about anything I talked about here or maybe something related to Matthew 24 or some other prophetic passage? Well, the first thing I says, does the text say it's the Holy Spirit? That's the first thing I said. Does it say it's the Holy Spirit? No. So it's the burden of proof is on the person who says it's the Holy Spirit. Do I have to prove it's not the Holy Spirit? No, I don't. Why wouldn't, why wouldn't Paul just say the Holy Spirit is restraining him now? Of course, I'm adding something to it, but I don't have to prove it's not the Holy Spirit. The, the, in order to salvage their position, they have to. They have to say. They have to say it's the Holy Spirit. And so for the, well, this two thousand years, the Holy Spirit is restraining somebody who was alive back then. So who was this person who was alive back then? You know what restrains him now? now they might say, well, that's the Antichrist that's being restrained. But again, they're adding something to the text that isn't that isn't there. I, I'm a I'm a big believer in sticking with what the text says. If I don't know what the, stack, the text says, I try not to add something to it in order to make it work. I, I left you with, hey, you don't have to know who this restrainer is. You don't have to know who the man of lawlessness is, but you're told the timing of these things that are taking place. So that's where I'm firm on. So uh, I, I, there are about five or six, five or six definitions. A lot of um, one good argument is because there's some, his, there's some evidence for it in Scripture is that uh, the, the Rome was what was the restrainer. Whoever this man of lawlessness was, and that he was going to do whatever he did, Rome was holding him back. At least there, there's something in, in Scripture where Rome is a restrainer of evil. One of the reasons in the book of Acts that, that uh, Rome interfered in things is they didn't want to let things get out of control. Uh, you had the Jews, the, the zealots, uh, they were always putting revolutions down. They didn't want any of that. And so the Roman Empire was a restrainer on, his, on the Jews against the Apostle Paul. They intervened to stop some of this stuff. So it's just, doesn't say that's the Holy Spirit. You got to, but anyway, that's how I would answer it. Anything else? I think um, that's, a, that's a popular position. Uh, uh, the, the, the thing about the prophecies having an initial fulfillment and then a later fulfillment, I'm not sure that is actually the case. I think what you find happening is in the Old Testament something takes place and it's used applicationally. It's not viewed as a se as second fulfillment. Uh, it's you know, something happens in the Old Testament. I'm, I can't think of one off the top of my head right now. And it's, it's oh, I'll give you a good example. Um, the book of Revelation talks about Jezebel and her children. Well, it's not going to be a second Jezebel that a, a, appeared in the first century. Uh, it's going to be someone who acts like Jezebel. So that wouldn't be a, a second fulfillment at all. It's, uh, in, in uh, Revelation chapter 11 talks about Egypt and Sodom. Uh, Jerusalem is described as Egypt and, Egypt and Sodom. Well, it, uh, it's, really not, it's really not that. Uh, Jerusalem isn't really Edom and Sodom. It's, it's a, a symbol. Then you're left with the other problem. With so maybe there was one, and then now there's a second one, and maybe there's a third one, and now there's a fourth one, and there's a fifth. Where do you stop with the number of multiple fulfillments of a particular prophecy? The New Testament tells us what prophecies from the Old Testament are actually being fulfilled in the New Testament era. We don't have to guess. So I think it's a, I think it's a guess to say, well, these things could happen again. I always say... The, the principle of what you're seeing here taking place is what's important and it's applicational, but it's not, a, it's not another fulfillment. Yeah, like I said, that's a, that's a popular view. The problem is 
Show me in the text where it says that. Right. Now give me the give me a text that says that. And I haven't found anybody who does. Uh, I know Tim LaHaye, here's the way he tries to handle it. If you look at Matthew chapter 4, 24, verse 9. See, the audience reference, uh, verse 6, you over here, wars of rumors of wars, uh, for nation will rise against nation. Verse 8, uh, but all these things are merely the beginning of birth pangs. And then verse, he says, that refers to the destruction of Jerusalem in AD 70. But when you get to verse 9, he says, then they will deliver you up to tribulation. He says, that's a generic use of the word you. So all of a sudden, and you can trace this, go all the way back to chapter 21, and follow the second person plural all the way through. And there is no indication that Jesus is talking about anybody but them. In fact, his audience understood it because they said it in chapter 20, 21 or 22 that he's speaking about us. And all of a sudden you get to verse 9 in chapter 24 and Tim LaHaye says, oh, that's the generic use of you. It switches how, who said so? Where, where do you see that? I don't see that anywhere. Um, so, again, it's these are these are popular, but they don't have any they don't have any uh, biblical evidence to make the case. I wrote a book called uh, Prophecy Wars, and I, I I actually took on John Murray. I mean, a great reform writer, a whole lot smarter than I am. I can tell you, but he took this idea of. This refer, some of it refers to the destruction of Jerusalem. Some of it refers in the future. But his arguments weren't very good at all. He just wasn't making his case. Everybody, they don't, they're not comfortable with this being already fulfilled. They have to wait for, for some eschatological event that's going to destroy our world. And they, they're, they don't want to be post-millennial. And bad eschatology allows you to be not post-millennial. And even opt optimistic all mills are just like dispensationalists and pre millers. They they're going to see, and some post mills, got my guys are just they see everything is going to come to a cataclysmic end, and only Jesus is going to be able to rescue us out. I don't I don't think that's what the Bible teaches.